Leverage the flow. Unless you really enjoy swimming upstream, then you're probably asking, what the hell does that mean? Well, hopefully within a few minutes, the title of this musing will make some sense. Um, I want to tell a story about this uh, startup company called Network Magic. And I've used this story before, though what I've figured out or realized is that when you ponder, you ponder stories from different directions, they often have multiple meanings to them. And I'd like to share with you an additional meaning that I gleaned from the network magic situation um, just recently. So network magic is a, is a small startup company that's brought a, a product set of routers to market recently with a, with a price point and, and function set that's very attractive to the potential customer base. So customer demand is, is amazing exactly what the company is looking for. Though as a result of that customer demand, customer support is continually overwhelmed and finding it extremely difficult to hire enough people and ramp them up to support the customers. The product is extremely technical and, and at times requires quite a bit of, of handholding on the part of customer support to get the customer to where they think they want to be. Now, in addition to customer support, I mean, the organization itself is, is growing rapidly. So other organizations are facing resource problems just like support is, though the all the other organizations have come to realize that the best place to hire new people is from someplace that understands the company, the customer, and the product, which is to go steal people from customer support, which makes customer support's job even more difficult. And as a result of what's going on, the organization is really concerned about the, the resource limiting situation, limiting the potential growth of the company. You know, they, they don't want to get into this growth and underinvestment scenario where uh, they have, they've, attained just what they wished for, though they didn't plan to respond to what they wished for. So they, they're under-resourced. So they, they're concerned about the organization reaching its potential. Additionally, sales is, is continually increasing month after month, but the support organization is growing far faster than support is. And the sales organization is up in arms, wanting to know why support gets to hire all the new people and sales doesn't, and not realizing that if you sell 10 new customers a month at the end of the year, you got 100 customers to support. Uh, in a growing organization, customers tend to accumulate so that you need more people in support than you need in sales. And the same situation is happening with the other organizations in terms of they're growing, but support is growing even faster than they are. And they're concerned about the fact that they're being treated as second-class citizens and they're wanting to know why support is, is getting all the attention and the ability to hire so many resources. So the, the question is how to deal with this situation. And in the, in the previous version of this musing, which I did back in November, the, there's actually nine different models that I developed to investigate this situation, all of which um, look at the, the situation from different perspectives in terms of how you might enhance the, the productivity of customer support by um, figuring out which problems to get rid of and how to implement a knowledge management system and, and giving the customers access to the knowledge management system and connecting customer support with engineering so that they get rid of, um, the figure out how to eliminate the most frequently recurring problems that customers um, seem to come up with and make demands on support. But the question is, how do you deal with this in, in the short term? And the easiest way to go about this is for the organization to simply um, create a, an organizational policy saying that you can't, that other organizations can't hire from support, which is good for support, but not good for the other organizations. And I remember um, 
um, Russ Ackoff was very fond of saying, never improve a part unless it improves the whole. Well, I wish he'd also added that that you need to think about not just the part, but the relationships. So the point is that you, if you're going to improve a part, you should also improve the relationships. And in this instance, if you simply create that that policy that says other organizations can't um, hire from support, well, this is good for support, but it's not good for the organization overall because then they have to go outside and hire people that don't know the company, the the product, or the customer. So, the if you think about this long enough, or in a, in sort of have an aha moment, I realized that this is really a prey predator problem. So that if you if you want more wolves, you have to raise more rabbits. So if if the organization simply changes the responsibility of support, it gives them additional budget and says, go and hire a lot more people than you need. And the intent is for you to develop people that understand the company, the customer, and the product with the intent that other people are going to steal them from you. And you are then evaluated on the level of support that you provide to the customers and the extent to which other dimensions of the organization find resources from support um, applicable to their needs. And so I thought that was marvelous. And the idea was what I, the way I titled this in terms of leveraging the flow, there's a natural tendency in the organization for other organizations to hire from support because the resources are the ones that are usually most applicable to the other dimensions of the organization. So if that's the typical way that it's going, figure out how to actually leverage the, the underlying or, or flow that's currently happening as opposed to actually figuring out how to defeat the flow and do something else. So I thought it was an interesting twist. So hope you found this of some interest. Oh, and I also put the all of the links to the various and sundry models that I developed. Each one of them ha looks at a different aspect of the relationships and has a video associated with it that explains the model. So um, take care. I'll see you in another musing soon. Bye.